Hey, welcome back. This is video two of our little space scene. In this video, we're going to be making a planet, make it our main focal point. So I'm going to make a new layer Call this planet. Head over to the tools and under my primitives, where it's currently on star, I'm going to click and hold and go to the ellipse tool. You can also use L on the keyboard. Rather than dragging out from the top left like this, I always find it a little weird. I prefer to hold the option key and if you hold shift it'll keep it proportional and then space if you hold space bar while you're dragging this out it'll let you kind of reposition i'm also going to lock the stars and the space layers so that we don't accidentally do anything with those i'm going to pop open gradient and just click on the gradient so that it gives us a fill gradient i'm going to change the gradient to a radial I'm going to want kind of a blue, so I'm going to click on the little uh, sliders up here and go to RGB. I'm thinking I want to make this kind of a bluish planet. You want to try to keep the colors fairly middle value. You don't want them too bright because we're going to need to do highlights and we're also going to need to do shadows. The darkest one, you want that to be fully like RGB black. And then over here on the left side, I'm going to add one more. Just make this a little bit brighter. This is going to be kind of the, the highlight. So I'm going to drag all of these up. I want to make sure blue is maxed out. I'm going to go over here, click on the gradient tool, and I'm just going to drag the gradient tool kind of from the outside. I don't want any real harsh bands with the exception of here in the shadow. I want to make sure the shadow is, is pretty firm. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and collapse the gradient for now. And here on the ellipse, I'm gonna go ahead and lock that. I'm gonna switch over to the pen tool. You don't want it to be crazy. And you also don't want these lines to be curved. So you don't wanna click and drag like that. So you just need to click once for sharp corners. And then when you get to the end of the line, you can hold Command, click off of it. And then with all of these, switch to my main selection tool, uh, V and then just holding shift, make sure to select all of these lines here. And first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that fill. We don't want any fill or actually any stroke on this. And I'm gonna hit command G to group them together. Now with the group active, let's go ahead and open up the appearance panel. And this is where we're gonna do all of our effects and stuff. So on the appearance panel, we can go ahead and add a stroke. And since we add it to the group, you should get a stroke on all of the different lines. Just real quickly, unlock the planet and the stars and all that stuff. Drag a box around everything except the lines. I'm gonna go up to my swatches panel. Just pull this down a little bit here and then click that folder. That'll create a color group that has all of the colors that we've used so far. So I'm just gonna lock that stuff again. Go into our group, select the stroke, and now when we click this little drop down, we get all of these different options. For the bottom stroke, I'm gonna go ahead and do Let's just do the same color as the planet for now. The next thing I want to do with the stroke is click on the name stroke actually, and then we're going to hit that extension so it extends off the end a little bit. We're also going to boost the limit just a little bit. I'm holding shift and using the arrow key. 30 should be good at this size. I'm, I'm working at 1920 by 1080. With the group selected, I'm also going to set the blend mode of the entire group. You can control opacity for each individual stroke um, and fill and all that stuff, but we want to do this for the entire layer. So I'm going to click on that main opacity control, click on normal. And for this, we're going to set it to soft light. Now we can better gauge what color we want to use for our lines. Something a little bit darker like that should work. We'll just start with a fairly heavy stroke. Let's start at like 80 points. And I'm going to start adding some effects to this. So the, the first effect I'm going to add is going to be the drop shadow. And drop shadow, we'll go ahead and I'm just going to do darkness for drop shadow so I don't need to worry about the color. Set the X and Y offset, mine are set at three, opacity is set at 50, and my blur is set at seven. And the blend mode is multiply, that's probably fine. But I wanna make sure that this drop shadow is actually on the stroke. I want each individual stroke to have its own drop shadow. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a stylize round corners. Uh, it's probably going to need adjustment later anyway, so I'm gonna leave it at 27 pixels, is probably fine for now. The next thing I'm gonna add is Pathfinder merge. So we want any of these points where they, they get close. We want them to merge together. So I'm just gonna drag these a little bit closer so you can kind of see how this is gonna work. And I wanna make sure that all of this stuff is actually on the, the stroke as well. So 
we'll put our merge and our round corners, all that stuff on the stroke. And then finally, I'm going to add a path outline stroke. And that ends up going down here under contents. We want that just to be up here on top of merge. And you can see how this is working now. So we can actually add a couple of extra effects to this as well. So with the stroke selected, I'm going to add a uh, distort and transform roughen. And instead of relative, I'm gonna set that to absolute. And it's, I wanna make sure it's not on uh, smooth because that's actually gonna mess with our, our smoothing later. We want that co round corners to do all of our smoothing. So I'm just gonna leave it on. And I'm gonna take the detail down quite a bit. We don't want a whole lot of detail, but we do want a little bit more size. Something that you might run into as well is that you might not see it update. So if you're adding things and you're moving these around and nothing's happening, or you're not getting this look with them in this order, rough and outline stroke, merge, round corners, and then drop shadow, you might have to take some of these off and then put them like on contents and then drag them back on. For some reason, Illustrator doesn't like to just update. I'm going to go into the stroke and just actually make that a little bit smaller. We've got this set up with the, the appearance that we want. Now we just need to duplicate that item. I'll go ahead and use the arrow keys to take it down just a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. And I think with this one, I'll make it a slightly lighter color, probably a little bit too light. So I'm just going to use my sliders here and drag this up, duplicate that, take the size down quite a bit, and then uh, make it just a little bit brighter. So now if I go in here, I start moving my points around, I can really adjust how this this looks. Like here, I feel like this is probably a little bit too much. So if I go into group and then go to the, the top stroke here, we'll take the size up and the detail way down. So we'll leave that as is with the rough end on this one. I'll probably go ahead and take the size down and the detail down to make it like two. That's looking pretty good. And then we can tweak the roughen on this one actually. And I think this one we can probably, I'm gonna take this size down a little bit. I'm gonna hit V on the keyboard for my main selection. Double click on that group, hit P for the pen tool. And now I can just you know, start adding points here and we can even connect points like that so that we get a slightly different look. And you can see how this basically makes these little curvy lines will kind of join together and become one thing. I'm currently in the isolation mode for this. To get out of isolation mode, I can either just hit plan it up here or I can hit V on the keyboard and then just double click on any empty space. Now you can see how it's kind of like hanging over the edges. We're gonna just clip those to the, the circle. So what I'm gonna do is take this ellipse, or unlock it first, click the, the ellipse. With that selected, I'm gonna hit Command C to copy and then select my group and then hit Command F to paste over top. And then I'm just gonna hold shift and select the group underneath. And then I'm gonna do a command seven to clip that. So this has created a, a clipping group. And essentially what that does, none of these lines are gonna show outside of that circle. And to keep everything together, I'm actually gonna go ahead and add my ellipse to that clip group as well. So now our, our clip group basically contains the entire thing. On the clip group, I'm gonna go ahead and select that, go to effects, and we'll give this just a little bit of outer glow. And for our outer glow, I'm actually gonna make this a little bit more of a blue color, I think. To give this a ring, the easiest way is to just go up here to ellipse. And I'm gonna start right at the, the center of the planet holding option. I'm going to go ahead and tilt it and we wanna give it a fill. The fill though I'm going to use is going to be the exact same fill that we've got on our ellipse. So let me click the ellipse and I wanna make sure that this fill is in my swatches. So now with that ellipse selected, click my gradient tool, expand the gradient and apply that. We just want that shadow line to match up as best we can. So with that ellipse selected, I'm gonna do Command C, Command F. I'm going to bring this up a little bit and I'm going to bring it down a little bit less. Actually, let me turn off snapping, command U to turn off snapping. And then holding the option key, I'm just going to scale these in. I want the, the sides to be uh, scaled in about the same, but I want that foreground to be larger than the background, essentially. Just hit V, hold shift. So we've got both of those ellipses selected and then I'm going to do command eight to make compound path. The next thing that we need to do is we're going to use one of the, the new features on, on 2023. So I'm going to go down to intertwine on object and then just click make. And all I need to do is drag a selection around that part that we want to intertwine. And it's important to make sure that you get some of this area on the outside here as well. You don't want to just drag it inside of the, the planet because it's not going to understand what you want. You want to make sure to get 
everything, um, you know, drag it all around just kind of on the outside. And you can see what it's done. It's basically hidden that piece of the ring. So then now it goes behind the planet for us. I'm going to go ahead and give the ring just a bit of a glow. So we'll go to effects and go to stylize. We'll give it a little bit of an, an outer glow. And that's it. That's our, our planet done. If you want to get a little bit fancy and add just a, a little bit of a nicer highlight, I'm going to go to the pen tool. I'm basically just going to kind of draw the shape of the highlight that I want. And I'm just using four points and they're all curvy. So I'm clicking and dragging for each one. You can hold the command key to select individual points with the pen tool still selected. I'm also going to give this the same blue as we had before. I'm going to set the entire object to screen and I'm just going to take the opacity down a little bit here. So I'm going to take that layer and I'm just going to put it underneath the, the clouds and stuff. And that's it. That's our planet done. Hopefully you uh, found that helpful. If you'd like to get the source file for this, you can find it in the description. And you can always support the channel for free by doing like, subscribe, all that good stuff.